Hi, my name is Jim Keefe. Uh, welcome to the 24-hour comic event challenge. And I want to draw something for you, a little something for your effort for coming to the event. Uh, what I did is I had did a little reference first. And also, what I do as far as sketchbook drawing is I like to have the drawing done first. So I get my reference. I get I took a picture of myself how I wanted to hold the book. I have my character, and then on the back of the drawing, I do a little carbon, and then when I redraw over these lines, it'll go right onto the sketchbook, centered right where I want it, and that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you a little inking demonstration. Hope you enjoy. Okay. Uh, so, this is the drawing I showed you just previously. This is the carbon on the back, which is just taking a pencil and rubbing it against it. So, I can put it against the sketchbook, I can press down on my drawing, and get the drawing centered exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to do some inking. First pen point I'm going to use is a B5 and a half. It's a lettering pen point, but it gives a nice line, a nice uh, static line as far as no thin and thick, which I need for Sally Force's face. So, Now, for the rest of the drawing, I'm going to use a brush. I like the variance of line. And as far as Sally Forth goes, that's the only part where you pretty much don't want the thick and thin, just because it messes with what the character looks like. I'm going to use a Winsor Newton brush. It's. I'm going to use a number one. And just off screen here, I am just, I have a scratch piece of paper, which I run the ink, make sure I get a nice line. And then, I start inking. Now if you'll notice, I also have a little piece of scratch paper underneath my hand. That's so I don't get any grease on the paper. And also, it helps me so I don't smudge what I've already inked if I happen to go over. Because as you can see, when my hand is going over the drawing, if I just happen to get on some wet ink, if I didn't have this piece of paper here, it would smear the drawing and I would hate that. I want a nice thin and thick. Makes the drawing pop a little bit. And I also want to make sure I'm not inking lines, I'm inking the form of the character. Another reason I like to use a brush, especially on sketchbook drawings like this, is the paper tends to bleed. And if I use a croquil brush or another kind of nib, I won't get the smooth line that I want. So for especially sketchbook, for this kind of paper, I like to use a brush to get a smoother line. So everything I did in to prep this drawing, I don't want to be thinking about the proportions and any other aspect when I'm inking. I want to practice on, I want to focus on the form. So all that kind of stuff I do to make sure I have a clean drawing here is so there isn't that constant penciling and erasing, penciling, erasing, because all that erasing just ends up to roughen the surface. And once again, then you get a line that bleeds all over the paper. When you get to the inking point, you want a nice, clean working area. Otherwise, it's just going to be a big mess. Sometimes, if you're worried about how steady your line's going to be, you could use a ruler 
even if you have a brush, you just run the metal against the ruler and you can get a straight line and you just kind of tilt the ruler up and this way you can get a nice straight line especially with something for I'm drawing her holding the sketchbook you're holding like she's presenting it to you So I just want a nice I just want a nice straight line for that. Uh, this is a B6 lettering point, and I wanted to little, do a little bit of detail here, so it's this little just necklace she has, so it gives a nice line. Once again, this one doesn't have a thick to thin line, but I don't necessarily want it for this. And get her necklace. And remember too, when you're, I'm simplifying the form for this. I'm not worried about drawing every individual link, how it links together. I'm just generally doing the shape and the shadow so you get an impression of it. Because a lot of cartooning is simplifying. I use a whiteout and I just dab it in there and that way It'll go in the foreground of that line I had behind. Now I'm going to use a curl quill point and just touch it up a little bit. And the curl quill point gives a nice, it gives a nice thin and thick line as well. And it's nice for little detail areas. You can do this with a brush as well. This is the lines, the pages to the sketchbook. You can do this with a brush as well, but I want to show you a couple different pen points. It's okay to move the paper around as well. I'm doing this primarily because the other side has, of course, the wet ink from what I just inked. So, I don't want to drag my hand through that. Always think of the light source. Add a little bit of shadow underneath this. Add a little depth to the buttons. And this, once again, is a B6 lettering point. And you probably can't see, but I actually lightly penciled the lettering out beforehand. Once again, just so when I'm inking, I'm not worried about placement. Last but not least, for a black and white drawing like this, I want to add some dark areas to it. So I'm actually going to make 
the sketchbook all dark as well. Now you can see how wet that area is. That's an area I'm staying away from. And the last thing I do, just a little bit of touch up here and there, just to add some depth to it. Maybe a little shadow. And there you have it. Uh, after the ink is dry, I just take an eraser, I erase any light lines, and you have a finished sketch. Hope you enjoyed the little tutorial, and wishing you all the best.